Hi, I'm Sarah Morehouse, one of the librarians at Empire State College. This video will help you determine how old the information in your information sources is. It will also go into how to decide how recent the information in your information sources has to be. As students, you're faced with a dilemma. Really, you're faced with it every time you need to find something out about a topic that you're not already an expert in. You find information and you need to know whether it's good, whether it's the latest and most up-to-date, or whether it's already been contradicted or superseded. If you were an expert in the subject area, you would already have a solid background in the topic, and part of your job would be keeping up with the literature. So as soon as you saw a new piece of information, you could evaluate it based on your existing knowledge. But none of us are experts in every topic. In most topics, we're just beginners. So if you read an article that was published this year, you don't have the background knowledge to judge if the information in it is as current as the publication date suggests. The first solution is what we're going to go through in this tutorial. If that doesn't work, and even after you've followed the advice of this tutorial, you can't tell if the information is current enough, a librarian can help you verify individual facts and figures by cross-checking with sources whose reliability and currency are known. And the third solution is to ask your professor. They're experts in the subject area, and they have the broad-based and up-to-date knowledge to be able to judge a piece of information based on whether it's out of date, innovative, or just off the wall. The trick is to ask the professor in such a way that they don't get the impression that you're just trying to take a shortcut around understanding the material for yourself. Don't ask, did Neanderthals and modern humans interbreed, or is Smith's article true? Instead, try something like, I'm confused because Smith wrote in 2012 that Neanderthals and modern type humans didn't ever interbreed, but around the same time other authors were writing that there was genetic evidence that they did interbreed. I can't tell if Smith's article is out of date or if he just disagrees with the other scientists. Can you help? That kind of question shows you've done the work, but you need the benefit of their experience to understand at a deeper level. But this tutorial is about solution one, judging the currency or timeliness of an information source and the information in it based on contextual clues. First, it's important to know that the publication date is not actually the age of the information source. First, the author had to research and write it. Then it probably had to go through quality control. Then it needed to be published. All of those things take time. News is generally the most current information available through an official outlet. A news magazine has information that was current in the week leading up to the date it was put on the shelves. A newspaper has information that was current as of a few hours before it reaches the readers. News on TV programs and websites may be a few minutes to a few hours old, or even delivered live. The thing to watch out for is that being the first to report on something is very important to news outlets. As a result, errors happen, so you have to watch out for later corrections. A notable example was when the Supreme Court issued its ruling on whether the Affordable Care Act's individual mandate was constitutional. The ruling was complex and the news stations were in a hurry to get something on the air, so they did not read the whole thing carefully. Both CNN and Fox News reported that the individual mandate was unconstitutional, when the ruling actually said the exact opposite. They did correct themselves within 10 or 15 minutes. But this just points out how important it is to keep an eye out for corrections and retractions, because the timeliness that makes news so valuable is also a little bit of a liability. Next, let's talk about scholarly articles. Scholarly articles are peer-reviewed, which is a heavy-duty form of quality control. Because of that, they're expected to have fewer mistakes and errors. But on the other hand, they take much longer to get to the reader. Information in a scholarly article is typically between six months and a year old by the time it gets to the reader. In some cases, it may even be older than that. How can you tell how old the information is? The best way to make a reliable guess is to look at the bibliography or references section. Look at the publication dates of the articles that they cite. If the most recent thing they cited was published in 2012, they probably finished writing their article sometime in 2012. But remember that their data were gathered even before they started writing, so the main facts and ideas might date back to 2011 or even 2010. Scholarly books are peer-reviewed just like scholarly articles. The difference is that it takes much longer to write and then peer-review a 300-page book than it does a 30-page article. So information in scholarly books is generally anywhere from one to three years old by the time the book is published. Again, you can get a more accurate picture of when the article finished writing the book 
by looking at the most recent date of the citations in the reference section or bibliography. For non-scholarly books, the age of information at the time of publication varies a lot. If there is a references section, which there should be if you're using a non-scholarly book in a research paper, check for the most recent publication in there to get an idea of when the author finished writing. What you have to watch out for, especially, are books on major current events like wars, disasters, and elections, even relatively silly things like a celebrity having a baby or getting a show. Just like the news, they're in such a hurry to get the book to market that they're sometimes letting mistakes slip through. When it comes to websites, there's no neat way to sum it up. The first thing you have to understand is that there really are two completely different things being called websites. The first is a website that is an information source. The person who puts up the website puts the content there and keeps it up to date. The second is a website that is a repository for information sources. The person who puts up the website does it as a service for others to submit articles, reports, videos, ebooks, or whatever. In a regular website, the website as a whole has to be judged for currency or timeliness. In a repository, every piece of content is separate and has its own currency or timeliness. When you're looking at a website, a regular website, try to find its copyright date or last updated date. Traditionally, this is placed in the footer of the main page. If you can't find it there, check the About page. You also need to look for other clues that it hasn't been kept up to date, like lots of broken links. But honestly, if you can't find a date, you probably can't rely on the timeliness of the website. Websites that act as repositories often make it easy for you by organizing their content by year, as the example on the right does, or even letting you search for it by year, as the example on the left does. If it doesn't do those things, you should still be able to find a publication date on each individual piece of content, and if you can't, you probably can't rely on its timeliness at all. Now that you have an idea of how to judge the age of the information in an information source, you need to know how to use that for your research. Each of the three big academic disciplines has its own standards for timeliness or currency of information sources used in research. The three disciplines are the sciences, including mathematics, biology, chemistry, physics, astronomy, geology, ecology, and the applied sciences like engineering, medicine, and computer science. The social sciences, including psychology, sociology, anthropology, economics, political science, and the applied social sciences like education, library science, business, and social work, and the humanities, which includes history, literature, the arts, religion, and philosophy. The disciplines aren't just divided up arbitrarily. Each discipline has its own idea of what constitutes valid, useful, and relevant knowledge, and how that knowledge is discovered or created. The sciences study natural phenomena using scientific method. Scientific method is a set of techniques for developing hypotheses and then testing those hypotheses under controlled conditions. In the sciences, facts and reality are supposed to speak for themselves. If there's a question or argument, the answer will be found by looking at empirical evidence and interpreting it with mathematics and formal logic. However, complex phenomena sometimes can't be understood in their own light. Scientific theories, also known as models, explain them. When new knowledge is created, it can either fill in the details of a model, expand it to cover a little more area, or connect it to another model, or it can completely change the way the subject is understood, throw out the old models, and establish a new one. In the sciences, information needs to be as fresh as possible. It's common for new information to make old information completely obsolete rather than just adding to it. Just from a practical standpoint, think about the rapid pace of discovery in something like AIDS research. Just last year, the thought of using a bone marrow transplant to cure AIDS was wild-eyed speculation, but this year they've actually tried it on a patient and it worked. Next year they might discover that the results are replicable, or they might discover that it was a fluke. For research in the sciences, try to pick information sources published in the last two years. Some of them can be three or even five years old if the information in them hasn't been superseded by new findings yet, but two years is the gold standard. The social sciences study people as individuals and in groups. Sometimes they use the scientific method by itself, and other times they add research methods derived from the humanities, like critique and symbolic interpretation. Just like in the sciences, knowledge in the social sciences is understood within the framework of theories and models. 
new knowledge can add to a model, change it, or result in its being thrown away and replaced. What makes the social sciences very different from the sciences is that knowledge is more ambiguous and negotiable. There's a lot more room to pick apart a theory or model based on how the research or statistical analysis was carried out, because when you're dealing with people and communities, there are so many more variables that can't be controlled for. As a result, there may be multiple models or theories that all compete to explain the same set of phenomena. All these belief systems coexist and they engage in dialogue, critiquing and influencing one another even as they develop, evolve, and expand on their own. In the social sciences, like the sciences, newer information is better than older. Your information sources should be mostly published within the past five years. In some cases, if the information in them hasn't been superseded, it's okay to use information sources that are 10 years old, or even 15. But ideally, most of your sources are 5 years old or less. The exception is for what are called seminal works. These are information sources that were so influential and game-changing that they're still considered important to read, even though other more recent information has come out. For example, Margaret Mead's work on the field of anthropology back in the 1960s changed the way people thought about other cultures and changed the way we study other cultures. This remains true even though we now know that many of her conclusions were flawed. Mead's writings remain seminal works that can be quoted selectively because of her influence over the field, even though you should be using facts and theories that are more up to date. The humanities study cultural phenomena. Humanities scholars use the techniques of critique and symbolic interpretation. In some cases, quantitative analysis is also used to support more traditional humanities research methods. Humanities questions always boil down to what something means and how that has an impact. That means that if you have three humanists arguing over a topic, you'll probably end up with at least four opinions. That doesn't mean their methods aren't rigorous. It just means that humanities scholars have a totally different set of beliefs about what makes knowledge certain, and about whether you have to be sure about something to say something interesting or useful about it. So the implication for you as a researcher is that an information source in the humanities never truly goes out of date. You can use a philosophy text from 400 BCE right alongside one that came out this year. The important thing to remember, though, is that scholarly writing is part of an ongoing conversation. You're not having that conversation with people who died 2,500 years ago. You're having it with the people who are alive and researching right now. So you can use older information sources, but you also need to ground yourself in the current information sources. There's one last thing to mention about older information sources. And that is that it's not just the facts and figures that get out of date. It's the ways of thinking as well. When you're using an older information source, you need to think about the time and place that produced it, and how those factors could have an impact on the content and how it's presented. For example, you'll find a lot of overt racism and sexism in even respectable scholarly sources from before the civil rights and women's liberation movements. Older scholarly works may talk about God and religion, even if they're books about science. Current events create intellectual trends, such as the 1990s obsession with everything having to do with computers, the internet, and virtual reality, or the trend that continues to this day of trying to relate everything to quantum physics. Also, within subject areas, different topics come into fashion and others go out of fashion. For example, for a while in literary criticism, it was common to examine how the author's life affected his or her writings, but that passed and the author's life and personal feelings were considered practically irrelevant compared to how the text worked as an entity in and of itself, and in the context of other texts and how people interpreted them. So when you look at an information source from the past, it's not just that you have to make sure that its facts are up to date. You also have to look at whether its methods and attitudes are compatible with current ones, and if they're not, you have to either discard the source or work out how you can fit it into the contemporary context. So now you have an idea of how fresh or current the information in your information sources should be, and also how to determine how fresh or current the information in a particular information source is. As always, if you have any questions about this topic, or any other library or research related topic, Go to http www.esc.edu slash askalibrarian.